Go and open your book to page 274. So today's lesson is on the inverse functions. So we kind of covered some of this in earlier chapter. Okay? And so, but, so this lesson will be just kind of extension of that. So the inverse function means you just kind of go backward. So before, right, you have the, for example, you have y equal to sine of x, right? And what happened is that the inverse function, you're just switching x and the y. And, and so, so th this would be an example of the, of the inverse function. So, so like this one over here, this is a graph of function f, right? Now, this, is a in this means inverse function. Now, inverse function means you switch x and the y. So when you switch x and the y, like this point is a, b, it becomes point b, a, and so forth, right? And so, so what happens is that if you switch every point, okay, then you end up with this graph. And so basically what you do is when you have inverse function, basically you're just flipping it over. That's all you're doing. Okay? Imagine that this is the mirror over here. So your original graph is the blue, and your inverse function means you switch x and the y on every single point. And when you do that and you graph that, you end up with this, with this uh, pink graph. And so what happens is that basically what you're doing, you flip things over. Just, just imagine you have a mirror over here and you have the, the mirror image. Okay? So same thing over here. If you look on this graph over here, when you have original, so this is the, the uh, this quadratic equation, right? You graph. And again, when you switch x and the y, it flipped over like this. Okay. Now, what happened is that when you have inverse function, when you flip it over, this no longer become a function. Because remember, in order to be a function, you cannot have more than one value, right? You have to, you have to pass the vertical line test. So like this over here, when it touches more than one point, then this is not a function. So to make a function, you need to go and have a restriction. So now you have to name it. Okay? You have to name it part into part of it. So instead of having the whole graph, you're just going to have this graph over here. So when you flip over, it will be like this. So that way, it will still pass the, the vertical line test. So, you, so it will be a function. So again, right now, with this function, when you flip it over, this is not a function anymore. It does not pass the test. Okay? And so therefore, you have to restrict it. This one is not a problem. This one, when you flip it over, when you, when you do this, it's still OK. But on certain functions, you cannot. Okay? And so that's what happened with, with, a, with a sine function, like this one over here. See, this is a sine function. So when you make it into an inverse, it becomes like this. And so it will not pass the, the test because, see, it, it touches more than one point. And so what happened with, with, a, with, with a trig function is that, so this is a sine function. So when you, so when you flip over, so what they're going to do is they, they restrict they they kind of just using the quadrant one and quadrant four. Okay, they just use this portion of it. So that way, when it flip over, okay, when it flip over, it will be still kind of okay. Okay, so that's what they're doing. So that kind of the, the reason behind that. So that's what this is this is this is what it's doing. So they kind of just chop off the rest of the graph. So they just use this portion. So that way, when they flip over, it becomes this part. So that is still, it's a function, okay? So for inverse function, there's a restriction, okay? For sine function, the, to make into an inverse function, you have to only go from negative pi over two to pi over two. So that's just something to be aware of, okay? And so when you, when you have the, the function, right? Normally, you have the quadrant one, two, three, and four, right? So quadrant one is positive. So this is good for all the inverse function. So inverse function, you're gonna get two quadrants. One positive and one negative, okay? So for sine, the so sine, so for sine function, you have to use quadrant one, right? Every, every function use quadrant one because it's a positive. Then for sine function, you have to think, okay, what quadrant so you're gonna get one quadrant for positive, one quadrant for negative. So quadrant one is always positive. So for sine, okay, you, you, you have quadrant one for positive. Then next you have to think, okay, what quadrant, you never ever use quadrant three, never ever, okay? So it's gonna be quadrant one and 
one of these two quadrants for negative. Well, sine, to get negative sine, you need to use quadrant four, right? So, 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 so inverse sine, we use quadrant one and four. This will give you positive, this will give you negative. For inverse cosine, it will use quadrant one and two. Because this will give you positive, this will give you negative. Okay? So again, quadrant one is always used, it's always positive. Then you have to figure out what quadrant will give you the negative for the other function. And so again, so you, you kind of have to figure it out. And it's very simple, right? It's going to be one or the other. So just think, okay, which quadrant will give you the negative for the inverse function you're looking for? And so, and because the reciprocal, right? So sine, so cosecant, right? Cosine will give you uh, secant, right? Now the tangent, for tangent, you're going to use the, so inverse tangent. So you're going to use quadrant one and four. Right? This will give you positive, this will give you negative. Um, and the reason for that, because there's, there's an asymptote over here, and you don't want to cross over the asymptote for the, for the tangent, that's why you use quadrant one and four. Okay? So, you, so you avoid going over, over that. Okay? And the inverse cotangent, we're using quadrant one and two. Right? Again, you never ever use three. Okay? So this is like forbidden, okay? forbidden zone. So again, you, every, every function, every inverse function will have quadrant one because that's positive. Then you have to figure out which one will give you the negative. Now for inverse tangent, both of these will give you negative. So which one do you use? Well, the reason you, you want to use quadrant four, like I said, because that's a, that's a, the, the, you know, the undefined over here. So you don't want to cross over the undefined. So that's why you use this one instead. Okay. So again, so those are kind of some of the, the background uh, information regarding the inverse function. So now let's go ahead and go over how to uh, evaluate some of the inverse function. So let's go to example one. So page 278, example one. Again, we already did a whole bunch of this before already. Okay? So 1a, so, in, so again, that, that's the inverse square root of three over two. So as soon as you see that, when, as soon as you see inverse function, right away you think about this is your angle theta, okay? Or it's, it's an angle. So as soon as you see that, that means it's an angle. Inverse function is a, it's an angle. Inverse trig function is an angle, okay? So you need to figure out what the angle is. And the way to do that is you just draw your triangle, okay? So you got square root, so you got square root three, uh, what sign? So this is a sine function, so it'd be square root of 3, 2, right? So what angle would that be? Well, that's 60 degrees, right? Okay. So, this is, so, so that means this is equal to 60 degrees. Now, most of the time, we're going to use radian, okay? So you, you got to get familiar with the radian, so this will be pi over 3, okay? So again, inverse function is, a, is an angle. So as soon as you see that, think of it as an angle. And now there are many ways of writing these. Okay, so another way of writing the, the inverse function this way is called arc sine. Okay, they all mean the same thing. Again, when you see the inverse function, this means also means inverse function right away. Again, this is the angle theta. Okay, so you can draw your picture. So it's going to be negative 1 over 2. So, so negative 1 over 2, right? And so this will be square root of 3. So you know that this is going to be negative. So this is a negative 30 degrees or negative pi over 6. Okay, now do not, do not make into 11 pi over 6. If you do that, it would be incorrect. You cannot use call terminal or inverse function because this is undefined and you cannot cross that to get there. Okay, so you can you to to get 11 pi over 6, you have to start from here, you have to go over here, but you cannot cross over here. So that's why you have to get there, you have to go this direction, that's why you have to use negative. Because remember, your, your, your boundary is from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. So you cannot use 11 pi over 6, okay? So you got to pay 
attention to the to your boundaries for the inverse function. Okay. Okay. Now, when you go to C, oh, let's go back. So eleven example one C. Yeah, sine of uh, inverse sine of sine of one point two radian. Again, there's no circle means it's radian. Okay. So you first have to check see if it's within the within the limit. Okay. So remember one radian. Th this is pi over two, right? Pi over two is one point five. Um, it's about about one point five radian. So one one point five to one one point two radian is about over here. So it's still within the boundary. Maybe your boundary is, is over here, right? So once it's within the boundary, then they will cancel out. So the answer would be 1.2, okay? Because inverse means they are, you know, they are opposite of each other, so they will cancel out. So, that, so you get that, okay? Now you go to D, cosine of sine, inverse sine of 3 over 2, right? So again, this is your angle theta or angle. So I'm going to call it theta. So basically, you're looking for theta. So let's go ahead and do that. So, so 2 over 3. So vertical is 2. Uh, so that's 2 over 3. And this would be square root of 5. Okay? And that's your theta. So now, you're looking at cosine of that. So cosine of that, right? Cosine theta, cosine of that. So you can use that to get your, get your triangle. So cosine of this angle, so cosine of that is going to be square root of 5 over 3. Okay? So again, we did this before. It just, right now, it's just using the different term, right? You're using, the, the, you're using this. Okay? But again, we did this before, so it's not that bad. Okay? Now let's go and do the E. Okay, example one e. You got inverse sine of sine of three pi over four. Okay, so three pi over three pi over four is right over here. Okay. Now, now you are prime because inverse function of that is undefined because remember inverse of that can only use these two quadrants, right? And so therefore, this one uh, is. Uh, is, is, is undefined. Okay. So cannot. So this one is undefined. Because you cannot, it, it's out of boundary, so you cannot use that. Okay. Okay, so again, so that's, that's what this is. So now let's go, let's go to example two, use calculator. Again, we already did this before, okay? So when you have calculator, remember you have to use the second function, right? To, whenever you're looking for angle, you have to get second function, right? So, and you make sure your calculator is in the radian mode, okay? So 2a, you got inverse sine of 0 0.8432. And so that's going to use the radian mode. Okay, and, and again, all you have to do is you punch that number, so 0.8432, and you go second sign, and so ends would be one point, and how many? It says four significant digits, so 1.003, okay, and that's it. So again, we did this before, right? Remember using a calculator, right? Okay. Um, now let's go to let's see. Okay, so I think we covered enough to do the assignment. So that that's gonna do some practice.